Hi. Tested and tried. Unveiling joy and victory through life's trials. 1 Peter 1, 6-7 tells us rejoice in this, even though for a little while you may have to experience grief in various trials. Even gold is tested for genuineness by fire. The purpose of these trials is so that your trust's genuineness, which is far more valuable than perishable gold, will be judged worthy of praise, glory and honor at the revealing of Yeshua the Messiah. In the powerful true words of J.C. Ryle, trials are intended to make us think, to wean us from the world, to send us to the Bible, to drive us to our knees. Tested and tried, unveiling joy and victory through life's trials. Want to know more? Hang around. Welcome, welcome to Lion's Roar 38 Ministries. Amos 38 tells us, The lion has roared, who will not fear. The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy. My name is George Magalhães, and we are an apostolic ministry with a prophetic teaching edge. It is our passion, our mission to reignite, equip, and release Christ-like disciples both locally and globally. We do that through our itinerant ministry, but as well as providing with resources just like this one to help you, to aid you in your God-given calling. Today we have a fantastic topic, a fantastic study, and that study is tested and tried, unveiling joy and victory through life's trials. All right, bringing us to our main verse today. And I don't know why I put that roar there, but it's okay. <laughs> Let the lion roar. All right. 1 Peter 1, 6 to 7, now reading from the message version, says, I know how great this makes you feel, even though you have to put up with every kind of aggravation in the meantime. Pure gold put in the fire comes out of it proved pure. Genuine faith put through this suffering comes out proved genuine. When Jesus wraps this all up, it's your faith not your gold, that God will have on display as evidence of his victory. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. We've got a beauty here today. Hello, hello. we we got <laughs> Prophet Sabrina with us, which happens to be my wonderful, lovely wife. All right. Just before she starts, before she starts, as I said at the beginning, we're talking about tested and tried mm -hmm. tested and tried so today's word will be a powerful study covered by our very own prophet serena um and as usual i'll be adding my own insights as well so first we will reveal a much needed context mm -hmm. before diving into our study that's right. now in our study we'll be highlighting four four key favorable outcomes that result in being tested and tried using the life of Gideon in the Bible as an example. The first, the first key favorable outcome is victory in life's open book test. The second experience closeness to God. The third breaking through from glory to glory. And number four, Faithfulness unlock the rewards of trials. All right. So in our study, we have reaffirm how trials refine us and draws us closer to God. Mm -hmm. They bring victory deep in our faith and unlock the joy of trusting him in every challenge. So I encourage you today to join us. Be expectant as we explore how being tested and tried, which usually doesn't preach well, but guess what? It's going to preach very well today. Transforms us into vessels of his glory, just like Gideon. All right, let's pray and we'll get right into it. Go for it. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful word. We thank you that you've already, you've already gone into this place, into this time. You've already prepared every heart and every mind to receive this word. 
Lord, as we dive deeper into your word, we thank you for this study. We thank you for a deeper revelation and understanding. We thank you that your spirit of wisdom and revelation is already moving in and through us and that lives will be transformed as they listen, as we all listen and receive from your living word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Being tested and tried, right? It's an essential part of the Christian life. It testifies to our relationship with God without trust speaking loudly in our circumstances. What do I mean by that? Well, you know, when it's heat up, that's when you know where your relationship with God is, isn't it? It reveals both who we are. Because that's when we, we, like I say, we know where we are in Christ and who we believe God is to us. Because it's in the trial that, um, that really speak louder when we, can, we see God's hand at work. And we're like, wow, you know, God is here for me. Who we believe God is to us. More importantly, being tested and tried brings joy. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I don't know if people say that. Um, actually, people don't say that um, that often. But this is um, what I've experienced. And yes, trials create joy. Now, um, when we're talking about joy, I'm not saying happiness. There's a difference. I think a um, while back you did um, a, a teaching on joy and happiness and the difference between it. Mm. I forgot the title for it, but yeah. So, yes, trials create joy. I'm not talking about happiness, but joy, which is eternal. We will unpack all that soon. It's like th this quote from um, Rick Warren. The ultimate test of faith is not how loudly you praise God in happy times, but how deeply you trust him in dark times. Now, um, you know, I I I'll just give you a little in a little test. I wouldn't call it testimony, but something that really marked me, and I didn't understand it back then. When it comes to tested and trial, see, I remember there was a time in our lives where when trials were so constant that we felt drained. And I'm sure oh, many of you have experienced this time where you're like, "My goodness, I just finished one, and I got into another one, and into another one. When when are we gonna catch a break? You know, does, does that sound familiar to any of you? Right." So during this time, while, you know, while we were experiencing that, we attended um, a party a few, that was a few years back. Um, it was a wedding. Yeah, it was. You remember then? Yeah, again, it, because I, I did the main thing, so I didn't know you would remember. Yeah, it was a wedding. I still remember that time where we met another minister who was newly introduced to us at that time. So we didn't know him before. And we began sharing our life experiences. Um, and I remember I said to him in an almost, yes, pitiful way <laughs> that there were too many trials and it felt like it was one after, after another, you know. He then smiled and replied, sister, what a joy. Man, I looked at him and I'm like, I did not expect that answer. You know, I expected a different answer. Oh, sister, it's going to be fine. God's going to take you out. <laughs> Maybe that's what I expected back then. But it was, sister, what a joy. Praise God, though. I have to say, praise God that, I, I, you know, I may say that, that I got a godly response. This is a godly response. But, you know, sometimes we get, oh, you're going to get there. You know what I mean? But it's very rare. And, you know, it's very rare for you to hear someone say, what a joy. Because this is a person who understand that tested and trial brings joy. You know, it's that's a godly response, that's a biblical response. Truth be told, I did not understand his point of view until now. Well, I'm not saying now, now, but you know, until later when I mature more. So today I want to encourage you all, I want to encourage all of us to rejoice in our trials. Although many aspects can be taught regard, regarding tested and tried, you know, people, we can talk about why you're being tested and tried, why you're still going through it, wh why it happened, where is the root of it, and all those things. We can, I mean, you can do a massive studies, but what I wanted to focus on is on the blessing that comes with it, right, on the result. All right. Yeah. So, so what does tested and tried really mean? So I looked it up. Um, because we were going to do this topic today, this study. And I looked it up and I saw, first of all, there's two. I'm doing a little bit of a K. 
First of all, <laughs> it's two things. Oh my god. Number one, tested. Number two, tried. Oh my goodness. And if you've been tested and tried, I think some of you will get that joke. Who I'm trying to imitate here. All right. All right, let's keep Anyways, <clears throat> tested and tried. So what does tested mean? It means, from a thesaurus point of view, it means examined, inspected, experienced, certified, reliable, tried, proven, faithfully tested, and tried. What does tried mean? Now, I'm talking, we are talking from a biblical point of view. That's right. Not from what the world considers it. Mm -mm. It means time-tested, judged, tried and true. Dependable, verified, tasted, investigated, faithfully tested and tried. Exactly the same thing. Mm. It actually means the same thing. Tested and tried refers to the process in which God allows or entrusts us with challenges. Entrusts us like Job yes. and so on. He doesn't, he doesn't um, come and say, oh, let me go and prickle George today. No, 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 no. Compared to some, what some people think like, oh, God is, I'm going through it. I'm so bad. God is punishing me. No, 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 no. That's not what he mean. So he entrusts us with challenges, hardships and trials to refine, purify and strengthen our faith, character and reliance on him. Amen. Now, this process is intended to develop Perseverance. We've got several scriptures in the Word of God that talks about this. Spiritual maturity and deeper trust in God's promises, preparing us for greater purposes, molding us into the image of Christ Jesus, and effectively refining our faith as pure gold. Now, someone wise said, The tested and tried life is a testimony of faith purified through trials. Each challenge becomes the furnace where trust in God is refined like gold, leaving behind the dross of doubt and producing a faith that stands firm, bringing glory to the one who never fails. Perfect. Now, the following scriptures, you can look up yourself later on and you can study even more, but the following scriptures are just a few of the many in the Word of God that enca encapsulate this biblical principle that tested and tried. Um, that's look up James 1, James mm -hmm. 1, 2 to 4, Romans 5, 3 to 5, Proverbs 17, verse 3, Job 23, verse 10, Isaiah 48, verse 10, Psalm 66, 10 to 12, and James 1, verse 12. Again, these are just some. There's many in the Word of God. It's a very testify. big um, subject. Now, if we take Peter in the Bible, right, you know, he wrote letters of encouragement to the elect exile in 1 Peter 1, right? So basically there were certain people that was exiled because of their faith and they went to different cities, we could say cities, right? And he wrote letters of encouragement. The key word is encouragement. He encouraged the saints to be glad in the trials they were facing. See, if we read, um, we read that in First Peter 1, 6 to 7 from the AMPC. Uh, verse 6 says this, You should be exceedingly glad on this account, though now for a little while you may be distressed by trials and suffer temptations. Verse 7, So that the genuineness of your faith may be tested, your faith, which is infinitely more precious than the perishable gold, which is tested and purified by fire. This proving of your faith is intended to rebound to your praise. Redound. And, is it? Oh, B, sorry. To redound <laughs> to your uh, praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, is revealed. All right, so in the message version, and I think we heard this at the beginning. Yes, that really, was the main verse at the beginning. But I really liked the, the way they put it in the message version because it's very down to earth. 
1 Peter 1, 6 to 7 says, I know how great this makes you feel, even though you have to put up with every kind of aggravation in the meantime. Pure gold put in the fire comes out of it proved pure. Genuine faith put through this suffering comes out proved genuine. When Jesus wraps this all up, it's your faith, not your gold, that God will have on display as evidence of his victory. Amen. Amen. I, I love I love that version. Um, again, like we say, we both do things differently. So if some of the verses that, um, he used is now I'm seeing this version. So <laughs> I like if you go up for a second. I like I like one of the the last video says it says that God will have on display as evidence of his victory that's a key point his victory so whatever uh, tested and trial you're going through you're not going through it alone when you receive the victory it's his victory why would he not um uh, be with you and walk to you through to victory when it's his victory i hope you get the point Anyway, in today's study, we will be highlighting four favorable outcomes that result in being tested and tried, using the life of Gideon as, a, as an example. The first one is, like we said before, victory in life's open book test. Second one is experience closeness to God. The third one is breaking through from glory to glory. And the fourth one, faithfulness unlocks the reward of trials. Now, let's go to the first one. First one is key favorable. Out, the first uh, key favorable outcomes is victory in life's open book test. Well, let me start by stating that how cool is it when God was talking to me? I think it. I, 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 um, let me say it like that. God was talking to me about it, and he and, and he showed me something, and I thought, man, that is so cool. Let me state that we have a test that has already been graded A plus. What do you mean by that? Well, we have an open book test where we can take refer reference at, at all times regarding any aspect of our trial. It's not like, you know, um, you've learned it all. You have to be perfect, George. You've learned it all. You have to be perfect. Now learn all the key things. Be perfect. Now go and take the test. No, you are going through the trial. You are in your test. You're sitting there, but you have an open book and you already received the victory. So you're already been graded. Right. All you're doing is filling the blank while you're looking at um, while you're looking at um, what's already been set for you in the word of God. Do you get the scenario? Is that how you say it? scenario? You get the scenario in the case where we do not know where to turn to find the answer. Holy Spirit, our teacher points it out for us, even in the exam. I don't know what to do, Holy Spirit. Oh, here's the answer. Turn to this passage. Then look at this verse. Right. It's just a simple matter of asking and trusting that he is our shield and salvation. I mean, that's another thing. He's our what? Shield and salvation. The more trust you have in God, despite your qualification or frustration, the easier the, des the test gets. Why? Because you are relying on God. So what you're doing is you're going to the teacher. I mean, how cool is that? You're in the test. You're looking at the teacher and you're saying, teacher, I don't know this answer. It's okay. We have a different type of test here. Turn to this page. This is the answer. You just need to take the pen yourself and write it down. You've already got an A+. Plus. I mean, there is no other easier test. Yes, you might be saying, but Sabrina, it's easy to give me um, um, a factual um, answers for tested and try. It's not easy to go through it. Not when you surrender. Not because when you surrender, that's why we talk about permanent uh, joy that is eternal. Why? Because, yes, you can see the problem is here. You're not, like, stupid, like you can't see that the problem is in front of you. It's not like you're denying that there is a problem. But you're looking at the teacher. The teacher is giving you the answer. And because you are assured of the answer that the teacher gave you, you know you will get through it, you will pass. So you have this peace of mind that surpasses all understanding, right? And because you have the peace of mind that surpasses all of the understanding, you got you you have that joy, that contentment in you. I'm not saying you're gonna be you have happiness. You get it? Let's keep reading. Let's li read Judges chapter six, verse one to nine in the AMPC version. We're gonna talk about Gideon, the life of Gideon. Verse one. Well, the Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord. We're giving you a context, right? And the Lord gave them into the hand of the Midian of uh, for seven seven years how many years seven is very key point 
Um, that's uh, two. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. Because of Midian, the Israelites made themselves den dense, dense, uh, not dense, dense, D -N -S. S, which are in the mountains and the caves and the strongholds. Verse 3. For whenever Israel had sown, <laughs> what is up with my tongue today? Thorn their seeds, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east came up against them. Now let's read from verse 7. And when they cried to the Lord because of Midian, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelite who said to them, Thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, I, bro I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the, out of the house of bondage. Verse 9. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all those who oppress you and drove them out from before you and gave you their land. So here we see the trials during this period for the Israelites. They had been in this situation for how many? I said the key point, seven years. And finally, they remember that only God had the answer to this trial and they cry out to God. So God decided to use Gideon to bring salvation to the Israelites. A fearful man who, while the angel appeared to him, was hiding from the Midianites while beating the wheat which is what they need to do for, for their food, a task usually done in the open so that, you know, the wind would blow away the chaff, which is a husk of the wheat, so that it's easy for them to collect it for uh, it during um, while they're harvesting uh, for their food. But because he was so afraid, he would do it in hiding. And here we see in this context, what's happened is an angel of the Lord appeared to him and is watching him, right? Let's keep reading. Let's read Judges chapter 6 verse 12 and then uh, chapter 6 uh, verse 14 to 16 in the AMPC version. All right, verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, like we said, and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of fearless courage. <laughs> I know, I wonder how he will have thought about it, right? Continue to verse 14. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in this in this your might and you shall save the Israel, you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midian have I not sent you verse 15 Gideon said to him O Lord how can I deliver Israel behold my clan is my clan is the poorest in Manasseh Manasseh sorry and I am the least in my father's house verse 16 the Lord said to him surely I will be with you and you will smite the Midianites as one man these are the key points See here, Gideon understood that there was a trial. If you actually get a time to read um, Judges chapter 6, 7, and 8, you will understand and you will have a full scope of the whole story, which of course will help you more under, in understanding it. So we understand he understood there was a trial. And he also understood he was not qualified. That's why he says, I'm, we are among the poorest in the clan, right? And you're you seeing me, I'm already hiding. But in this test, God said, I will give you the solution. This is an open book. So God is effectively saying, trust and obey me and you will walk in victory with an A plus grade. So trusted and tried, there is a victory in life's open book. We will, we will unpack his life as we keep on going so you guys will be able to understand how he walked into um, sorry, how he walked in test, being tested and tried, and how he, what required of him in order for him to um, receive the blessing of the test and try. Number two, experience closeness to God. Trials bring us closer to God. Now, they are what I call face to face encounters with the reality of the Almighty. Like we said before, you know, you know who God is when it's hot. You know, when all the situation around you is like, where well, there's only one way out and that is God. And when God comes through, you're like, whoa, God Almighty. It's funny that even so-called atheists, you see them driving and all of a sudden they're about to crash. What do they say? First thing, oh my God, oh God. Oh, wait, wait a second. I thought he didn't exist. All of a sudden, God shows up. Mm. So where his grace abounds and his love, which has been ever so present is display 
ever so brightly to us. When we experience that peace that surpasses all understanding, we come to a place to surrender and the joy of the Lord takes over. That's what we were talking about the joy before. We have contentment in trials knowing that we are not alone. And God, whose word is yes and amen, is on our side. See, let's reread Judge, Judges chapter 6 verse 14 from the New King James Version. Can you read it? Okay, Judge, Judges 6, 14 in the New King James. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Well, for me, this verse is very touching. Why? Because as God told him to go with the strengths he had, like George just read, go with the might that you had. I mean, how many times we like, oh, we can't do it. We can't do it. You know, this is such a heavy trial on us. We are not equipped to do it. You know what I mean? But what did God say to Gideon, a guy who was so full of fear, right? Go to go with your strengths you had. This verse did not say qualify yourself first. But instead, go and I shall qualify you. And many, many times in our life, because of the system of the world and how we've been brought up, we are like, you cannot work in this position because you're not qualified yet. Whereas the kingdom of God is like, you need to depend on God and he will qualify you. Where you do not have the qualification, he will supernaturally qualify you. I mean, if you look at the Old Testament, you know how he had the, the Israel had to do build, build stuff and all that. And God, the Bible said God qualify them. You know what I mean? Even if, even if it's a trial that will bring you into qualification, like um, in the uh, life of Joseph, you know what I mean? God qualified. Even in the life of Job, with all the issues he went through, right? Because he went through in, in the end understanding who God is, who God is to him as at the end. It's like, oh, now I know God. You know what I mean? God has qualified him for double portion. These are the, are the goodness that comes out of trials, right? So he was drawing Gideon to him, encouraging him. Right? Not putting him down. See, God is not in the business of putting you down. Or else he would not give you solution. Who give you solution to put you down? Right? God saw and knew who Gideon was. So how, you know how the angels came and said, Oh, you, 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 you know what I mean? You mighty man of valor. Right? I'll tell you what. Most, most of us, if you were in Gideon, would say, Are you being sarcastic right now? I'm hiding. I'm doing all those things. You're saying you're mighty man of valor. But that's not how God sees things. God, was, God knew who he was. And he encouraged Gideon to see himself right through God's eyes. Listen to Judges chapter 6, verse 22 in the New King James Version. Can you read it? Judges 6.22 in the New King James. Now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. So Gideon said, Alas, O Lord of God, O Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. See, as the conversation between Gideon and the angel progresses, he became more reliant on God. That's why I said, please go and read Judges chapter 6 to, um, uh, to 8. And his speech pattern, if you start reading it, you will see there's a change in it from being a coward to having boldness. It wasn't, oh, now the angel of the Lord talked to me and I'm bold. Do you understand? Right. There was a, there was a progressing change in having the realization. Wow. God is on my side. And, and we have to sometimes realize and not put ourselves down. Oh, you know, this person gave a testimony and suddenly the person realized not everybody is in the same level or the same understanding. God doesn't even talk to everybody the same way. I mean, God doesn't talk to me the same way he talks to George, but the result is there. His word is still applicable to each of us. Through tested and try, our faithful surrender and trust in God guarantees, like Gideon, we will experience closeness to God. Number three, breaking through from glory to glory. Another good aspect of trials is that they usher us into breakthroughs. See, we are moving from glory to glory both in our identity and the trials we are facing. Why? Because trials bring forth an awareness of pattern that is reoccurring issue that is an um, a reoccurring issue in our lives. 
For example, if you keep doing the same thing and the same thing keeps happening over and over, I mean, you will surely start um, realizing, oh my gosh, every time I keep doing it, it's the same thing. It's the same. So that trial will also show you that, hey, I need to be close to God. I need God to give me the answer so that I can move from glory to glory. The other thing that trials do is um, it's also show you where your relationship with God is, right? From glory to glory, even in our relationship with God, there, there is a change, there is, um, there is a closeness. And even in the trial, I'll tell you what, babe. Um, the first time you had to believe for something, it took you quite a bit of, 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 of like faith for it. Now, if I tell you to believe for the same thing, would, you, would it, would it uh, press on you heavily the same way as the first time? No, nah, that what tested and tried us. Because you're going from glory to glory. Again, going back, in a way they highlight it so that um, when it comes to reoccurring issues, so that we can break through it and walk in the blessing of the word of God. It also brings forth boldness through Jesus Christ. And we start to experience our authority as children of God. Um, before you were drinking milk, like the Bible says, now you are a mature Christian where you are standing and taking authority, understanding who you are in Christ. Right, you will have more boldness and more assurance to cast down and say to that mountain, you know, move away from here. You will have more assurance. Why? Because of tested and tried. Before you're like praying, Lord, let the mountain move, let the mountain move, let the mountain move. You've gone to that test and you got um, an answer from God. You're rejoicing. Another test had come, another trial come. You're not going, Lord, let the mountain move. You know what you did last time. You know how God came came to you through for you last time. Now you're like, I'm telling you, mountain. I know that my God, my God's word is yes and amen. Now move right so it's a, there's a big difference in the case of gideon he went from threshing wheat in hiding to taking his first step by destroying an idol which is in his own backyard listen to it from judges chapter 6 verse 27 from the ampc version okay judges 6 27 in the amplified classic so gideon took 10 men from among his servants and did as the lord had said to him but because he feared his father's household and the men of the city too much to do it by day, he did it by night. See, we notice here that Gideon did what God told him at night because he feared his father's household. Then he became bolder and went from glory to glory. If in, in Judges chapter 7 verse to, um, 25, that's where we see he actually defeated what he was called to defeat the Midianites. But listen to, uh, listen to it anyway from the New King James Version. Can you read it? Judges 7.25, New King James. And they captured two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb. They killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb, and Zeb they killed at the winepress of Zeb. They pursued Midian and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side of the Jordan. Through tested and tried, boldness and transformation is breaking through from glory to glory. Amen. And finally, number four, faithfulness unlocks the rewards of trial. When we read the story of Gideon, one important aspect we notice is that he's faithful. Once he identified the Lord was with him, he did not rely on his feeling, even though he was fearful more than twice. I put him there more than twice because he kept being fearful and God said, go. And he goes, if, if you are fearful, you know what I mean? He did it first. He destroyed the idol at night. And then it's like, God is like, if you're fe fearful, take your servant to go with you. You understand? He was still being obedient, even though he was fearful, he was faithful, right? So even though he was fearful more than twice, um, you know, he still did what he needed to do. He was fearful. So I would encourage you all to read from Judges chapter 6, right, to 8. Gideon's faithfulness started in his household where he built an, um, he built an altar to, for God before he was able to tackle the trials that Israel were facing. See, our times with God, our time with God brings the benefit from our trials, so what I'm saying is our times with God, when we are in trial, we will see that benefit comes out because of the trust and all those other aspects, uh, key favorable um, aspects, I said, will come out naturally, right? 
not only that with like george was saying there's that boldness in it that he was he he then go and put an altar in his house and what you do in in your private time with god will reflect for what um mandate god has for you to do in, during that trial as you represent him does that make sense in public. sorry in public yes in public all right li um listen to it from um james chapter 1 verse 12 from the ampc version you want to read james it? 1 12 amplified classic blessed happy to be envied is the man who is patient under trial and stands up under temptation for when he has stood the test and being approved, he will receive the victor's crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. All right. Through tested and tried, our faithfulness unlocks the rewards of trials. Again, if you're interested uh, in diving deeper into this topic, I encourage you go and check out those scriptures that we, we mentioned at the beginning. Uh, James 1, 2 to 4. Romans 5, 3 to 5, Proverbs 17, verse 3, Job 23, verse 10, Isaiah 48, verse 10, Psalm 66, 10 to 12, and James 1, verse 12. So in today's study, uh, study we highlighted four key favorable outcomes that result in being tested and tried using the life of Gideon as an example. The first one was victory in life's open book test. How cool is that, right? Open book test. Number two, experience closeness to God. Number three, breaking through from glory to glory. And number four, faithfulness unlocks the rewards of trial. I'd like to finish with this powerful quote from J.C. Rowe. Trials are intended to make us think, to wean us from the world, to send us to the Bible, to drive us to our knees. Amen. Amen. All right. Just before we start our second part of the program, if you're new here today and you heard this word, you're probably wondering, I've never heard Christian word like that before. Well, that's because most of the stuff that is said out there is a bunch of baloney. And I mean, rotten baloney. It's absolute garbage. Because that is not Christianity. Christianity is a person of Jesus Christ and he's real and he's alive. And guess what? It's very simple. You're not here by accident. It's mm -hmm. a divine appointment. 1 John 5, 4 to 5 in the word of God tells us, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. John 3, 16 to 17 goes on to say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through the world, through him, that the world through him, that is talking about Jesus Christ mm -hmm. might be saved. saved. So what do you have to do? All right. 1 John 1 verse 9 is very clear. If we confess our sins and sins in the most basic definition is when we live our lives without God. You know, in all creation, we, humanity, were the only creation that God created in his image. Everything else, nothing else was created in his image but humanity. There's a reason for that. He loves you that much. And God himself is above all things, is first and foremost spirit. So we are not human beings with a spirit and a body and all that sort of nonsense. No, we are spirit beings, but in the image of God with a body for a purpose here on earth and a soul. Amen. So if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What do I have to do then, George? It's very simple. Look at the screen and you'll see that in Romans 10 verses 9 to 10 tells us very clearly that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Don't try to better yourself. Don't try to go out there and but you don't know what I've done. It doesn't matter. Come as you are. He'll receive you as you are. 
If you mean it, you declare it as I am speaking to you right now and you can hear my voice. Do the same thing. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you will be saved. For with a heart man believeth unto righteousness and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now he doesn't end there. Because in Titus 3 verse 5, Ephesians 2 verse 8, Acts 1 verse 8, amongst others, it goes on to say, then he saves us. So you give your life to Jesus, declare with your mouth out loud, the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God's raised him from the dead. You are saved. From that moment forward, you belong to Christ Jesus forever. And he saves you. But then he doesn't end there. He's got a gift, an amazing gift. Look what he says. By grace, through faith, the gift of God, washing away our sins and giving us the new joy of the indwelling Holy Spirit. That is the very Spirit of God. Amen. And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. What does that mean? He's got a spiritual gift. Once you've done your first bit, and you can do it right now, wherever you are, whether you're in your house, in your car, in your workplace, in your office, in your garage, doing workout, whatever it may be, who cares what people think? He wasn't embarrassed to go on the cross for you on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Why should you be embarrassed? Call out to him right now. If you, it, you know, the, the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. If you mean it, declare the Lord Jesus. Call Jesus into your life. Call him. Repent of your sins. I choose to believe that God raised him from the dead. That is a gift by grace, and you'll be saved by faith. And then invite him. We're going to do that together in a prayer. Invite Holy Spirit to come, and you will receive that joy of the indwelling Holy Spirit. What that means is he's going to come and baptize you with Holy Spirit. We call that baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. He'll come with fire. He'll come with um, uh Weapons, Equipping spiritual you. weapons, tools, equipment to equip you as a soldier of God, as the word of God says that we are kings and priests, Christ ambassadors, living epistles, soldiers of the kingdom of God. So he comes bearing gifts because in the spirit world, there is a war going on between good and evil. Mm -hmm. And even though the war has already been won, that victory is being manifest through our time. But... Which side you take, which side you land on, depends on you. Depends on the decision you make right now. So let's do it together. We're going to pray together. We're going to invite Holy Spirit to come, to baptize us afresh. And he's going to come. And some of you may feel some weird stuff. You're going to feel like a massive weight just lifted off you, like you're not feeling heavy anymore. Some of you are going to get healing, are going to receive healing. Others are going to be delivered from all the sicknesses and, and, and the nightmares you've been going through. Others are going to uh, uh, receive heat. like a heat. Like Others are going to feel like electricity is running through your body. It's the very power of God. And others will start going, oh, and you're like, what the? What is going on? What is that, George? That sounds like you're speaking Korean. No, it's a <laughs> spiritual language. Hallelujah. It's a spiritual language. One day we'll go there and we'll <laughs> preach in Korea. Amen. <laughs> but it's not Korean. I don't think so anyway. No, it's not. I can't say, actually, because I don't think it is. No, it's not. <laughs> she, she's seen so many Korean movies, she'll know. All right. <laughs> Lord, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We are hungry and thirsty. And right now, as we pray together with our brothers and sisters, Lord, we say, come. Holy Spirit, fill us afresh. Baptize us with fire. Let your fire fall. Your word says that our God is a consuming fire. Let your fire come and con consume everything that is not of you. Set us on fire. Set us alight that the world will come and watch us burn for you, Lord. We say revival. We speak revival in and through us. And we thank you from this day forward that our lives will be spent for you. Yes, In Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Heaven rejoices over you. I encourage you. We encourage you. Get connected with the Bible teaching Holy That's Spirit right. through church. You need a community of believers around you in person. That's so important. The Bible talks to us about that. If you can't do it in person, because there are countries out there in the world now that are going a little bit loony and 
Yeah, well, it's the devil. He knows his time is running out, so he's putting a lot of pressure. Nevertheless, there is churches online. You can get connected with the church online the as well. Community. And if you need help, you can send us an email. Mm -hmm. As you can see on the screen, you can send us an email. We'll do our best. Let us know where you're at, where you live, and we can definitely look up uh, um, a church that can help you and That's guide right. you and provide that safe environment for you to grow, for you to serve, to be served, for you to grow in that relationship and in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. And if any of you, um, you know, not any of you, I'm sure you guys have been blessed by the message today. Um, I would really encourage all of you to you see all those um, social media up there. You know, evangelize. You can't go out and evangelize on the street. That's another form of evangelism. It's to share the gospel in every means that there is, right? So share it on your Facebook. If it's blessing, it's a blessing unto you. We are meant to be a blessing unto others. Bless others with it, right? If you know someone needs help, you will see we have a website. One of them is a website, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's on website. the screen. It's on the right now. Yes. Yeah, so you got the website down here, right? You got the website, um, share it, you know, um, encourage other people. If it's not for, from the, for this message, we have tons of message, if I can say it in that way, in, my, in that English. There's tons of message online that will be a good encouragement for you guys. Listen to it, you know, guys, the more you remain in the word of God, right? The more what you will manifest is a, is the glory of God, the presence of God and life. Because out of our mouth shall come out life. And what you take in is what comes out. Amen. Amen. All right. So before we go on to our second part of the program, which is called the collective, where we spend time praying, prophesying, whatever the Holy Spirit leads us to do. And I encourage you, if you have specific prayer requests, write them Tell down them already now. on the Facebook live chat section. But before we do that, just before we do that, I encourage you, if you are blessed by this word, type in right now, because that will help improve the algorithms and all that sort of stuff that goes behind the scenes so that this video gets seen more and more throughout the world. Type in, if you were blessed by this word, tested and tried. Type in. Amen? Amen. All right. This brings us to the collective.